Hello and welcome to the eighth episode of the Heart Hook Home Video Crochet Podcast series. That's such a mouthful every time I say it. Today we are going to be discussing the uber important topic of crochet fatigue. We're also going to be talking about a few things that are on my hook right now um, and to, you know, just hang out and have a little bit of fun. I should have made a cup of tea. So go make yourself a cup of tea, hook back up with me, and let's talk about muscles and cramping and eye strain and headaches and why does my elbow hurt of all things, right? So those of you that have been following Heart Hook Home for any length of time know that I have a sister and she's a prolific knitter. She's excellent at knitting. And I have a brother, Forrest. And Forrest is the one that actually taught me how to crochet way back when. So uh, I'm going to say about eight years ago now ish. Um, so Forrest taught me how to crochet. Meadow, my sister, is a prolific knitter. And she is also a doctor. Well, she has a doctorate. She's not a medical doctor, but she teaches anatomy and histology to future doctors, right? So at the college level, she's wicked smart. Um, some of the words she uses, I'm just like smile and nod, like I have no idea what you're talking about, but okay, that sounds great, <laughs> right? So um, a while ago, several years ago, um, I asked her to help me construct a post for Heart Hook Home, an article about the muscles that you use in your body while you're crocheting. So your neck muscles, your upper back muscles, your shoulder muscles, the muscles that you use when you rotate your wrist like this when you're crocheting, they actually originate above the elbow is what she told me. And I, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure that I'm not wrong before I publish this podcast, but um, they actually, that's why your elbow might be sore while you're crocheting. It's not your actual wrist that's going to get super sore. Your upper back, right? Your neck muscles, you can get eye strain from having a headache. So one of the most important things that Meadow told me, right, about crochet fatigue is that for every inch, you know when you're sitting here, and let me pretend like I'm sitting here and I'm just crocheting, right? I'm just crocheting and I, you can tell that my head is like facing down. Let me turn sideways. So you can tell that I'm looking down at my crochet, right? And let's just pretend that I'm just crocheting away. If I slouch down a little bit, say I'm just sitting here for a while and I just start slouching and I go like this, right? You can see that my back and my neck and all of this business right here is going to get very sore very quickly, right? It's just going to happen. One thing that blew me away when I asked Meadow to help me with this post about crochet fatigue or crochet stretches, what muscles do we need to be stretching, right? That's a, that's a huge thing. Like I can get up and stretch all day long, but if I'm not stretching the muscles that I'm actually straining while I'm crocheting, which I have no idea what those muscles are, you know what I mean? Um, help me, right? One thing that she told me that I put in the blog post and I'm going to link it here when I show you this new pattern, not new, but show you this pattern here in a minute. Um, one of the things that she told me is that for every inch, like whether you're crocheting or you're playing on your phone like this, or you're reading a book or whatever you're doing for every single inch that your head tilts forward, you're placing an additional eight pounds of pressure on your neck and shoulders for every inch. So if I'm sitting here and I'm doing this, looking down at my crochet, I mean, we're talking 24 pounds of pressure added to the, my neck and shoulders, which of course that's going to get sore. You know, it, it, it almost makes me sore just thinking about it, right? So not only that, we've got um, muscles in our arms and the front of our chest. So think about it. The muscles that we use, and I am not anatomist, okay, an anatomist, <laughs> but from what I understand, for every, like we're sitting forward while we're crocheting, the muscles that we use in our chest to take a deep breath, to expand our chests, right? These muscles right here, if we are sitting here like this constantly, those muscles aren't getting worked out the way that they should, which means that we can't take a deep enough breath, which might explain why when you're sitting down and crocheting forever, you might just feel the need to just do a, you know, just a, oh gosh, man, you know, or get up, go to the bathroom, check on the kids, you know, for the most part, they're fine, but they may need a little checking in every once in, <laughs> once in a while, right? Go make yourself a cup of tea, take the dog outside on a short walk or, you know, take breaks. I know that taking breaks is not always um, exciting or ideal, um, especially when you're in the middle of a project, because, you know, as 
as crocheters, we can sit there for what? Making a blanket? If I'm making a cardigan, especially something that I've made before or a stitch that I'm familiar with, or if I'm listening to an audiobook, or if I'm binging one of my favorite Netflix shows or anything like that, Outlander or On Stars, whatever, I can sit there for hours and just sit there and crochet and crochet and crochet and crochet. And one of the things that surprises me is that while I'm crocheting, actually maybe this really shouldn't surprise me at all, but while I'm sitting there crocheting, I have both of my hands engaged, right? I've got my hook in this hand and I'm a yarn in this hand and I'm just going to town, right? Something that amazes me is that I don't even put down my hook so that I can take a drink. Even if I did have a drink of tea or coffee or whatever it is, most of the time my coffee goes cold. And then I end up chugging it about halfway through the cup just so that I can drink it even if it's a little bit cold, right? So that's something that I have to be more mindful of myself as well is to stop every once in a while and just breathe. Stand up, put your shoulders back, open up your chest muscles, you know, stretch your hands like this, go back and forth and pull pull your, your wrists nice and um, tight, right? Open up your back, muscles, stretch your uh, your neck and your back and your shoulders. Gosh, it feels good just sitting here, right? Just doing this right now, it feels good. So Meadow has graciously helped me with this blog post, with this pattern that I'm about to show you, with different stretches that you can do. Wall angels, where you stand against the wall and you really stretch out your shoulder and your neck muscles. Wrist exercises where you know you put them on the wall and really stretch out your wrists like this I know I have funky funky elbows but um yeah really stretch out your wrists like this get up walk to the bathroom walk to check on the kids take the dog outside do a little bit of just get up and move around right and feel um, the blood flowing and everything else and <clears throat> you know I know that it's super hard to do that, but it's also very important to do it as well. We talked about the every inch you move your head forward and how much how much pressure that puts on your neck and your shoulders. It's absolutely insane. So posture, huge, huge when you're going into crochet or when you're really getting into crochet. Posture is huge. One of the things that I have created, I actually have two different patterns that are helpful um, when it comes to crochet fatigue or, you know, just crochet in general. Um, the first one that I have here, this one, is a crochet pattern that I wrote several years ago and it is in the blog post that I'm going to link in the bottom of the video description. But this is the um, support pillow that I designed, right? So we can sit here, okay? It's basically a boppy. If you have had a baby in the last 20 years, you know what a boppy is, right? It's basically a boppy, but this is a crochet pattern that I designed so that I could use it while I'm sitting on the couch. And look at the, the way that my elbows are more supported now. And I have my project closer to my face. Like, yes, I do still have to look down to crochet it, but it's not like I'm like this, you know what I mean? Where I'm placing so much stress on my upper body. So this support pillow is absolutely perfect. And you know what I found is I actually leave this on my bed and it's easiest or, or helpful to me. Even when I'm getting ready for bed, I need a few, you know, a little bit of unwind time when I go to bed. So either I'm playing a game, I play Sudoku on my phone, I play Candy Crush every once in a while, reading um, anything, scrolling Facebook, whatever, but I can have this on my bed like this and I feel like with the support of this, even if I'm having holding my hands up here, there's so much uh, better ratio, right, of me not putting my head down in my lap um, or, or resting it against my headboard, right? So it just really helps with crochet fatigue. So first things first, make sure that you are using a good posture, sitting in a good chair. Like I know that traditionally, you know, I always sit in the same spot on the couch, right? I have a chair, that's my chair, I sit in my chair. Um, I always sit in the same position when I get ready for bed. Same thing, right? When you're crocheting, definitely find a position that is very comfortable for you, that is supporting your upper back and you know, you're know you not leaning super forward and you're not putting too much strain on your neck. Um, so on that thread, right? Um, I have used this crochet support pillow pattern, which you know what's kind of interesting? There's a whole nother tip in here that I haven't even touched on yet, but pantyhose. 
I use pantyhose a lot in crochet and I'm not crocheting with them. What I'm doing is I am using pantyhose to insert my stuffing, my fiber fill, right? So that if any of this, you're not gonna be able to see it. If I pull these stitches apart a little bit, it's pantyhose. I have stuffed it with polyfill, but if the polyfill starts to peek out, it can't peek out because I've got the pantyhose there and I can just um, stuff it as, as securely as I can. So this is definitely a, a pattern that you should make. You know, it, even if you um, wanted to make one for your baby, right? Or dual use. I mean, cover it obviously so there's no spit up or anything on it, but it's an excellent pattern that you should definitely check out. So I used this pattern and I modified it because, you know, looking at the shape of this, it looks like an oversized neck pillow for traveling, doesn't it? So what I did was I modified this pattern to be a legit neck pillow. So here is the bigger one, here is the smaller one. So these are actually two different patterns, but they're perfect for each other. I've used, I used a little uh, cord here, or I created a crochet chain and a button here so that I could put it around my suitcase like this. And this button is absolutely adorable. I'm gonna try to show it to you guys. Look at that. Isn't that adorable? Ah, he's so cute. <laughs> but you know, use this in the car or whatever. And let's, let's see. Oh, isn't that nice? Oh, I could just take a nap right here. So these are two very similar patterns that are made from crochet to help you crochet or to sleep. And I absolutely love those. So check out the post that I'm going to link in the bottom of this video for the free patterns for both of these um, support pillows, whether it's the neck support pillow or the crochet support pillow, AKA, um, you know, baby pillow, just like a boppy basically, but it's just a fun crochet pattern that you can use to whip up um, for supporting yourself while you are crocheting, right? So take breaks, do stretches, use your support pillow and see if that doesn't help. Um, one of the things that I did find very interesting um, if, and Meadow is going to have to correct me if I'm wrong, but the, one of the major muscles that you use in order to crochet when we're rotating our wrist like that, she's told me that one of the major muscles that we're using is actually up here near the elbow. So that could be why your elbow gets so sore, right? So and instead of, you know, going to the doctor, well, go to the doctor. If you're having severe pain, please go to the doctor. But if you're noticing it, oh, why is this starting? Just all of a sudden starting, you know, that could be why. So changing the way that you're sitting, the chair that you're sitting in, or the way that you're holding your hook, etc., can help you. Um, and definitely do the stretches every once in a while um, while you're crocheting for long stretches during the day. Get up, have a drink, make some tea, go to the bathroom, hang out with your kids for a minute. <laughs> um, yeah, so... All right, so let me show you a couple other things that have been on my hook lately that I'm really excited about. So I don't know if you have seen, but um, in 2020, um, I did a washcloth series. So every month for the entire year, I did three different cloths, and I may have told you about this, but there's three different sizes. There's a small size, a medium size, and a large size. And we learned a new stitch and then made these cloths, and it was amazing. It was great. 2020... If that's the one thing that I took out of that was a set of washcloths, then that is that is just going to be okay. That is that is that has to be um, that has to be enough, <laughs> right? Um, in 2021, I decided that I wanted to to do the series again, but I wanted to do a household series. Where part of the reason that I started Heart Hook Home in the first place, and the the way that I kind of took my patterns in the beginning is very useful patterns. I always want to create things that either in, you know, are useful to you or enrich your lives in some way. And so in 2021, I decided that I would do a household series, useful things around the home. So we've got like pan protectors so you can put them in between your pans when they're in storage so they're not scratching each other. We have a casserole carrier that you, we use dowel rods to carry this casserole, you know, to your next potluck or whatever. Um, we've got a grocery bag holder. If you are living in a state that still um, uses plastic grocery bags and you want to reuse those, yay, thank you for doing that, number one. And number two, make yourself a plastic bag holder that you can put on the doorknob, right? So I've got all of my grocery store plastic bags in there. I try not to use plastic bags very often, but when I do, I want to keep up them so that I can reuse them, right? Um, so in 
2021, we did all of these households um, crochet patterns, 12 of them to be exact. We have a llama dusting mitt, absolutely adorable. It's a little llama and it has fur or the fur uh, stitch, which is basically just chains and going back through, but he's freaking adorable. And so he's for dusting, right? Absolutely precious, useful, fun, cute crochet. And there is a child size um, of that pattern as well, the dusting mitt. And I had my son at the time, he was 11 maybe, and I had him model it for me with his little little baby hand <laughs> or little boy hand, right? He had him, had him hold up the little thing with his dusting mitt on there and he was so cute. Um, it could double as a bath mat too for kids if you're wanting, you know, use it as a scrubber when you're scrubbing their backs and everything else. So that whole explanation there leads me to the fact that in 2022, I am doing a car series. So in November, just a few months ago, I got a new car, new to me car, it's, it's not new, um, but it's absolutely adorable. It's a little Fiat, her name is Fiona. I named her Fiona because she looks like a tiny little hippo or maybe a Shrek with her ear sticking way out on the side like that, but she's absolutely adorable. It's probably, I think it is the biggest Fiat you can buy. It's the tiny little SUV version, um, but it's, yeah, it's the 500X. It's the biggest one that you can buy as far as I'm aware. And I decided there are so many things for that car that I want to crochet. And I thought, you know, I, I had a seatbelt cover on my last car and I really loved that. So I decided to use a really fuzzy yarn, this Lion Brand Sherpa, which actually, hold on, I have some right here. This Lion Brand Go For Fleece Sherpa, right? This is the yarn that I used to make my new seatbelt cover for Fiona, and it is so comfortable. One of the things that I noticed um, when I was um, brainstorming for car patterns, because I thought, you know, I want a seatbelt cover, I want this, I want that. Um, I'm not going to tell you everything that's coming this year because that wouldn't be any fun, would it? But I had a, we were on a, a family video call. So it's my sister, my brother, my mom, and me and my boys. And we're sitting here and we're all just chit-chatting. And while I had everyone on the phone, since everybody crochets or knits or is crafty, I said, hey, guys, I have like six or seven ideas for this car series. I need more help. One of them is going to be a seatbelt cover. And my mom, um, I don't know if you... Uh, if you followed her come for a few years now, you know that my mom had breast cancer and she underwent chemo and radiation and all this. Um, she's doing well now. She's doing very well now. But one of the things that she told me that was really surprising to me that I had no idea, um, the port that they put in for chemo, it's like right here, right? And it sticks out quite a ways from the chest. And I didn't even think about it, but she said one of the big things about the port that really bothered her is that the seat belt goes right there, right? And it's just like, eh, and it's either pushing in or pushing it up or pushing it over. And it's just, she said it was just uncomfortable having it in in the first place. And then when the seat belt rubs on it, I mean, I can imagine how uncomfortable that is. So the point of me telling you this is that if you know someone that is currently undergoing chemo treatments, this could be a really nice gift for them, right? It depends on, you know, whatever side they put the chemo port on, I don't know if it's this side or this side, but make them a car seat seatbelt cover, right? So especially with a really squishy yarn like this, you could use the fake fur, the faux fur yarn. You could use the Sherpa yarn. There's lots of different brands. You could use the Burnett blanket yarn, the really nice um, squishy blanket yarn. That would work perfectly for this purpose. But I think that would be a very thoughtful gift and a very um, extremely helpful. It only, it took me like 15 minutes to crochet it because this yarn is so big um, that you don't need it to be, I mean, it's just, I think, I don't, I don't even know how many rows I did, maybe 18 rows or something. Like it was not bad at all. So that's just something very thoughtful and helpful, you know, right? And I never would have thought about that. So today is the second Friday of February, um, which means that it's time for the second installment of my car series, which is just mind boggling to me. I cannot believe it. But I made a lot of these adorable little car coasters, right? Let me show you here. These are ones that you put in your car cup holder 
to catch condensation or spilt coffee or anything like that. And I put these pink ones in there in my car because I like the color of them, obviously, right? You see this blanket? <laughs> but I love that color and I think it's nice and bright and fun. And Fiona needs a little pink in her life too. So one of the things, this is a brand new free pattern that is on the Heart Heart Home blog today. I'm gonna link it in the video description. But um, one of the things to note about this is my friend Jamie, um, commented on the Facebook post when I published this just a few hours ago and she said these are gonna work great in our uh, she has a reclining couch right the ones that has the cup holders in them I'm like oh my gosh that would work perfect in there so she's making some to put in her couch cup holders right which I thought hey that's brilliant I don't have cup holders in my couch but if you do keep that in mind right um but take these out and wash them it it'll keep your car that much cleaner another thing is when I was doing my research on these, cause I wanted to know like um, car cup koozies or coasters, um, how big are they? I, I had no idea. Like there has to be a universal size because they sell these everywhere, right? And on Amazon. So I got myself on Amazon and I was looking up and all of the ones that I found were two and a half inches across. Well, I made these two that are two and a half inches across, right? This is what I used to design the crochet pattern. And these were too small for my car. They were just, they, they, were, they weren't big enough. So I made them three inches. So I would definitely start with the smaller one first, which the only difference between these two sizes, let me hold them up together so you can see how much bigger the blue. It's not, it's really not that much bigger. The pink one that I'm holding, I used a G four millimeter hook and the blue one that I'm holding, I used an H five millimeter hook. That's the only difference. It's the same exact pattern. So one thing that I would do if I were you, and you are not sure which one you need to make, this is only three rounds, right? This is the fastest little crochet pattern you will ever see, I promise you, it is super fast. So you make one round, you make two rounds, and then you do the little scalloped bit around the edge, and it is so fast. Make one with the G four millimeter hook, take it out to your car, put it in your cup holder, see if it's small um, or big or whatever. If it fits perfect, then great. Make a couple more with your G hook. If it's too small, just bump up your hook size to an H, a five millimeter, and make yourself a set. You can make all different colors, all different, um, yeah, so that you can change them out, throw them in the washer, you've got fresh ones. They take less than eight yards of yarn. So this is a great project for um, scrap yarn, for stash busting. I mean, you're not busting much because it's not very much of a yardage, but um, another thing that would be great is if you're going to craft fairs and you're trying to sell quick items at craft fairs. I mean, these work up so quickly that you could even sit there at the craft fair and work up more of them and like string them together and sell them at a, a set of four. If you wanted to use an even bigger um, yarn, so this right here is 100% cotton. This is dishy cotton. This is my favorite cotton. If you wanted to make them bigger, like for actual coasters for your house, you could use a bigger yarn, like a bulky weight yarn and a bigger hook and they would come out just that much bigger. So very versatile, very easy, very fun. And I am very much looking forward to the next several months of this car series. There are so many things that I wanna do for this car series and I cannot tell you all of them because it's not fair. And I want it to be a little bit, at least a little bit of a surprise, you know? <laughs> but anyway, so these new coasters are available, they're free, and it is a really quick, super quick pattern. If you're gonna sell them in sets of four, I mean, honestly, you could do four for $5. I mean, they work up so fast. For me, it takes me maybe five minutes to make one, maybe a little bit longer. I mean, it's really, really quick. So if you can make four of them in 20 minutes or even four of them in 30 minutes, five bucks, I mean, whatever, you know, especially if you're sitting there anyway, great project to make while you're waiting on the kids to get out of school or if you're stuck at a train or anything like that. So anyway, I need to come up with a blog post on Heart Hick Home of very quick, fast, stash busting projects like this. So maybe I will include this in that roundup when I get that done. So that is all for today. I know that went really fast, at least it did for me. <laughs> so um, make sure that you are doing your crochet stretches and whip up one of these beautiful crochet pillows. <laughs> Isn't that nice? But whip up one of these for your support, right? So I'm going to also link to my sister's blog. I did say that, um, I did tell you, or maybe I told you, I don't remember if I told you, but she um, she's a professor. She teaches anatomy and histology at the college level. And she also has a blog called Anatomy Love. 
and it's amazing. I follow her on Facebook. I follow her on Instagram. Her blog is absolutely amazing. If you know anyone that is getting into nursing or medical school or anything like that, and they need, they're taking a bunch of anatomy, um, she teaches in a way that even I understand, which is saying something, okay, <laughs> right? <laughs> but she, she's really good at explaining things and giving you tools to remember things that I never would have remembered. And I have no reason to learn any of this, really. So um, definitely pass that along to anyone that you know that is in the medical field or going to nursing school or doctorates you know, programs or anything like that. So, all right, guys, I am going to let you go. And I've got some very exciting things coming for you in this car series. So definitely stay tuned. Next podcast, we will be talking about a brand new cardigan pattern that is almost finished. And I am really excited to share that with you. I don't know if I told you, but every month in 2022, I am planning to release a new wearable pattern, whether that's for men or for women or for, you know, kids or whatever. But I'm planning to release one new, fresh, wonderful wearable pattern the first week of every month for the entire year of 2022. I think I'm a little bit crazy, which uh, we, we knew already, which is, I mean, I'm not surprised. Um, but I think we can do it and it's going to be amazing. So every um, podcast that at the end of the month, I'm going to show you the new pattern that comes out for the next month. So here in two weeks, when we have our next episode, I will share with you the March party. I haven't named it yet. So, all right, you guys, you guys have a wonderful weekend and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching.